Hi, my name is Steve Threlkeld, and I'm an infectious disease specialist in Memphis. You know, I've read several really good pieces about the psychology of COVID-19 and about risk-taking in general regarding our health since this pandemic started. A lot of them suggest that we really only want to do something to take action related to our health when we feel sick. When we feel fine, we have no inclination at all to go get a vaccine or a cancer screening or anything else for that matter. We're afraid seemingly to open any door for fear that there's some tiny risk behind opening that door. We can't as easily see the larger risks of staying where we are. Our brains are just not hardwired to see that. So we're very much in the don't just do something, stand there mode. And we can be just as maladaptive on the other end of the spectrum too. When we're sick, we wanna do something, anything sometimes. Uh, we tend to reach for therapies proven or not. A good example is if you have a common cold, it's common for people to go to their healthcare providers and browbeat them into giving them an antibiotic. When the real therapy is chicken soup and bed rest and other sorts of over-the-counter medicines to combat symptoms. But our brains just don't seem to be convinced that those agents or those things are really doing something at all. They want more, in that case, an antibiotic when, when we feel sick. Now, in the case of COVID-19, it's more recently been manifest as therapy with monoclonal antibodies. Now, all by itself, that's a good thing. I believe in the data for monoclonal antibody, and our infusion center was actually one of the first facilities in the country to give that therapy once it received emergency use authorization. But very few people would suggest that the data are anywhere near as dramatically impressive for the monoclonal antibody therapy as they are for vaccination. So people are avoiding taking the vaccine, but then once they get sick, they're taking a therapy, which I think is good, but is much less proven, in fact, than is the vaccination. And we even reach for totally unproven therapies like ivermectin and hydroxychloroquine because we, we realize that when we're in trouble, we need to do something. And that's when our brains wake up and tell us to take steps to protect ourselves. And another point about that is simply um, doing research. My colleagues and I uh, are very worried sometimes when we hear people say, you know, I've done my research or my spouse has done his or her research and we've decided that the vaccines are not safe or effective. The problem is that what they're doing is not research. Research is when you have a hypothesis or a thought and you go test it with experiments and you use the results of those experiments to add to the knowledge base that we have about that topic. What they're really talking about is they're just acquiring data that are already out there on the internet or even social media. The problem with that is that they are absolutely at risk or at the mercy, I should say, really of the quality of those data that they're accessing. And that quality is highly variable. There's also something very important called the confirmation bias, which simply says that we tend to go after information and find information that agrees with what we already think. And we tend to avoid those pieces of information that tend to make us change our mind about something. So that's not really research at all. But please just remember a very important and a key point about COVID-19. And that is that severe illness has really become a choice. People choose now to get sick from this, Ill from this infection and not to protect themselves. Almost no one in our ICUs, and any of those people who are dying of COVID-19 now, have been vaccinated. And if you really let that fact sink in, like those of us working in those ICUs and watching those people die have, all the other discussions and arguments really fade to black. Very recently, I stood outside the door of a coworker, unvaccinated, who died of COVID-19. And I stood outside that room with a family member. And we remarked to each other that we wished that we could somehow bottle the pain and the regret that everyone felt over that just to give everyone out there a small taste so they could realize that this doesn't have to happen anymore. I see so many people arguing over smaller and irrelevant issues related to politics and other distractions, but people who see what our coworkers see every day don't waste time with those sorts of arguments. We just want people to stop dying and we see way too much of it still. And the idea that you're too young or too healthy to die of this disease just doesn't hold water anymore. And finally, I think children under 12, and in some cases immunosuppressed people, even who are adults, don't have that choice to be protected with a vaccine effectively. And if we allow this disease just to smolder on and to spread in our community, then we're putting them at risk as well by our bad choices. True, kids don't generally get as sick as adults do, and it's unusual for them to die. But there are a lot of parents out there uh, who tragically know that it does happen, and there are more and more of them in recent days than we've seen in the past. So please make sure that you don't put yourself and your loved ones at risk for terrible disease and death. Um, we've seen the pain when it happens. 
when people have made the wrong choices by listening to the wrong people with the wrong information. So please get the right information from trusted healthcare providers and protect yourself and the people you love.